this old cobalt drill bit here is as dull as can be. Um, I've, I've resharpened this so many times and right now it's very dull and I'm going to show you my quick technique to resharpen a drill. But first I'll show you how dull this is. going nowhere fast. Just completely dull. Just made a little small impression, but not cutting any chips at all. Okay, on a drill, on a drill bit, the, there's two main things we want to concern ourselves with when we're uh, sharpening it. And first is the main angle which tapers off in, obviously in two directions and on a, on a cobalt more aggressive metal drill bit like this the angle is usually 135 degrees and then right behind that at the, the top of, of the flute here is relief and what that does is after you sharpen right at the end of the flute here when you get the angle right then the more relief you put on it as you relieve these two edges here then what happens is is it's able to cut right up into the point if you just sharpened the angle here you know just sharpen right to where this flute ends on e either side it'll cut but if it's not it won't be sharp right to the to the very tip so the relief helps to cut that back so it forms a very sharp point right at the right at the center so uh, very simply, I just use an angle grinder, and what I do is I take, right here I've got a wood block, just a simple, any piece of scrap wood, and then I just mark, I put my drill bit up to the wood, and I just mark, when I see that this angle here, half of the 135, which I guess is about, uh, what is that, one, uh, 67 and a half, when that's flat, and I mark that, or you can just hold your drill up to it like this, you know, and just take a pencil and just mark, you know, hold it where it's flat there, and then mark that. And that should be about 67 and a half degrees, and then drill that through. You know, I use this drill because it's easy, and it drills easy enough through wood, though it won't drill through any kind of steel. And then, you know, drilled on that angle, like such, and then when I push that up through, then right there the angle sh this should be flat right to the top of this flat and then I can you know keep it this way and I can use my angle grinder to touch it a few times here and then turn it and then touch that end and then that'll sharpen the main angle so I'll, I'll let you see how that works and then you have to work the relief in order to make it sharp right to the point so yeah let's uh, I'll show you how that works Okay, so lock this in the vise. By the way, my vise always tilts like that just because I have a thick rubber pad beneath it because sometimes I hammer on this and it's not a traditional post vise with any support, so I just wanted to have a little bit of give. So if you see that, you know, you don't no need to comment on that. And then I'll push my drill up and then I'll just notice that, yep, see that's nice and flat with the top of this piece of wood. So that just gives me a reference point. So, take my angle grinder, and make sure you have a fairly new flat disc is what I like to use, and then you have to be very consistent, you know, turn it on and then gently touch it a few t seconds here, turn it, and then hit the other, the other angle. So let's see.
can actually take your fingers and feel that right at the edge there should be very sharp. You want to make sure you cool it off as well, so I'll cool that back a little bit. But, you know, this takes a lot of trial and error, and as you, as you sharpen the angle where the flutes end, you'll start to lose relief. So, like I said, if you're starting a new hole, it won't work then. If you were just trying to uh, enlarge an existing hole, this would probably work just like that because the edges here are sharp. But right to the point is not because it needs that relief to make that come to a point. So, the, and the relief, I'll just do that by eye. I'll just, I'll just hold it gently and by eye, work one side and then the other side, one side and then the other side. Like I said, you have to be very consistent on each side. You know, touch it a few times here, keep it as flat as you can a few times here, and then test it every now and then. Feel, put your fingers on it and feel if you can feel the sharpness, the sharpness of that, uh, of where the flute ends. And then where that flute ends there, that's sharp right now, probably halfway up. And then once you cut that relief in on the back end of each, of each angle here, you know, when you cut in on this end here, that'll help to sharpen it right to the point. But just let's try it out the way it is right now after I've just done the uh, angle, the main angle sharpening and see if it's a little bit better. Should be, but I don't think it'll cut, it won't <clears throat> cut until uh, to the very center, but we'll give it a try. Give it a go, you never know. And then like with this technique as well, like I said, it's a lot of trial and error where you have to, you know, get both angles just exactly right. So you have to, you know, you have to co constantly experiment with this kind of a freehand style. But yet right away I can feel it's definitely better than what it just was. It's definitely cutting chips now. It's actually pretty darn good right now. Yeah. It's actually already halfway through that. So I'll go a little bit more. Just cool it off again with some water. Yeah, it's actually very good. I don't know if you can notice it, but it's pulling out pretty good chips just like that. It's not skidding. Just that, like I said, the point would just need to be a little bit sharper. And it would go a little bit faster then as well just about through. Cool off a little bit more. I like to just, I just cool off in, in water. Don't like an oily mess. It's always skids like that. There we go. And cool it off. It looks... So this is a piece of 3 8 and... Yeah, I drilled a nice hole for just... I just touched it for what? One minute, maybe, with the, uh, with the angle grinder, with this technique, with the small wood block. Otherwise, it wouldn't have done anything to this steel except skid along and, and just, and just uh, make a little indent. Now, once I get the, uh, the relief of that bit done, it'll cut even faster because it'll cut in the center much better. It'll give you a much more consistent cut. But, you know, that's a good way, a quick, cheap way to just use, you know, a piece of scrap wood and an angle grinder to save some uh, very expensive bits like uh, cobalt bits. And then one other thing is this bit is uh, eight and a half millimeters, I think. So it's it's... Not a big bit, but a medium-sized bit. The uh, it's the bigger the bit, usually the easier it is to to sharpen with this technique. You know, whereas if it's really small, it's very hard to get, especially to get that relief area just right. And then, you know, just quickly take this out and show you. You know, I haven't done this yet, and I'm surprised that it cut as well as it did. You know, maybe not great, but it cut fairly well. What I what I would do then is. In order to get that relief just right, 
you know, I take this like such, you know, rest it on a spot where it won't move. keep working it like that and then the area that's you know the cutting area again is the, the edge of the flute the front end of each side of the flute here I don't know if you can I don't know where I am here if you can see that and then what I'm just doing now is I'm working this back that way until it reaches until these two come almost together right at the tip and that forms a nice point that's the very very tricky part of this but yeah like I said uh, you know, give it a try, uh, be patient, and you'd be surprised with the success you could have with just, uh, you know, that simple of a method, you know, as long as you uh, are consistent. Okay. All right, I just want to recap this a little uh, quickly here since my filming le uh, leaves a lot to be desired, you know, when I'm actually doing operations. So here's the same drill that I just sharpened, and what I, um, for this simple technique I use, just basically just get a block of wood and then mark uh, the angle that one leg is and in, in this instance this drill I believe was 135 degrees and that's you know both sides you know coming like like such 135 so half of that is about is 67 and a half so that's about what I marked here and then you know take that drill and I just drilled from one side to the other, trying to follow that line, that angle. And then when this is inside of this basically very, very simple jig, let me just turn this over a little. When this is in that very simple jig, you can see that the top angle, once I get it turned right, should be flat with the top of this. And you don't want to run your um, flap disc on this piece of wood. You just want to use this to hold in there and to maybe put pressure forward or backward so that it stays in one locked position and that'll give you that angle that you need on that side on one side then turn it 180 degrees and then flatten the other side but you have to be very careful they have to be exactly equal so if you have a new bit you know a new bit is perfectly equal on on each side you just want to make sure that you put equal pressure and equal time on each side with your flap disc so then okay now what you have to check is the you know the the uh, the flute is what runs the length of the the drill and that's sharp so that's basically what's doing the cutting but when it's cut on an angle you have two legs exposed here and here so it cuts from this angle here up to the tip but the problem is is when you um, when you buy a new drill you'll see that there's a relief on either side on the back end of you know it's cutting in this direction like this so right there's a you know it's a sharp edge there and a sharp edge there and then the back end here once that's the relief is put on it makes it come to a point right at the very tip so it'll be able to cut from the tip down and so when you just saw me cutting it was you know, I was basically cutting out chips, and I felt it to be satisfactory because this is such an old, an old drill. Um, but you know, most many people will say, well, it should be a very, you know, a shaving or, or a, you know, longer swirl, swirled kind of a shaving that comes out. Well, you know, once this is done, and it's pretty close to where I want it right now, then that should pull out less of a small chip and more of a long, stringy sort of a piece of metal more of a shaving you know when it's sharp and that would be because it's sharp from the from the very tip here right to the very end of the flute so it's cutting very consistently and rolling those those spirals off so but you know once you use a drill you'll notice that it'll start to cut more in chips and that's because part of it probably the very tip has become a little bit dulled so yeah it's just that simple and you know like I said I just kind of by eye I put that relief on towards the tip but you could also make some sort of a simple jig for that in this one you can see I'll kind of use a pencil there you can see the relief is there and there on this one and you know then it forms a point right in the center and I could come in up a little bit more on each side but so far this is pretty good and this is like I said a very old cobalt drill 
So, you know, this kind of a bit costs maybe $15 new in this size. So, yeah, the more you can use it, you know, you know the better. Uh, this was probably, not joking, was probably about this long out to where my finger is here when I bought it. So I've, I've sharpened it all the way down to here. So you can see it's almost getting to the end of its life. But, yeah, it still serves me well. And just practice this technique. And it's just, it's very simple, low tech. All you need is, is an angle grinder with a flap disc. The flap disc I was using, I think, was 80 grit. And just make sure that it's a fairly new flap disc and doesn't have any deviations in it from grinding other things. So that'll maintain a nice flat, a nice flat uh, surface. So again, like I said, there's the little simple wood jig. You put your drill bit in, run it up to where you need to have it, you know, then use your angle grinder, flap disc, touch that, keep it as flat as possible, you know, count maybe for a few seconds, turn it 180 degrees, get the other angle, and then once you feel, you can look at it and also feel it, and once that's as sharp, you feel you've got it very even, that's important, so that both, both legs are cutting, and then you can see that it's sharp, you can feel it, and you can also visually see that it looks very sharp, then try it out, if it doesn't work, then obviously it's because it's not, you know, it's not going to cut right in the center, right at the top. And so you have to have that relief on either side there and there. You know, if you, if you know, I don't think a file would work on this kind of a cobalt bit if you wanted to go nice and slow. But take your angle grinder and just go slowly here and then slowly here. And you can get that angle. Look at a, look at a new bit. And that can give you an idea. But honestly, this one here, I didn't really... The relief is probably just I did that by eye and just made it equal and it works fine. If you looked at a new bit, it's a little bit uh, steeper on each side. So, yeah, hopefully this explanation clears that up a little bit. You know, I apologize that sometimes I'm, um, you know, when I'm out there, you know, doing some work, I don't usually pay attention so much to the camera. So, yeah, hopefully it works for you. Thanks.